Hi everybody. And this is just um, one, a big thank you for everybody that's here. Uh, to all the new people, welcome. We've hit past 80 likes, which is really awesome considering that I'm a little person in the middle of kind of nowhere, um, Moncton in New Brunswick, which means that I'm in the part of Canada past Montreal. Like there's the whole part of the country if you keep going past Montreal to the east. <laughs> and I'm in there, population isn't very high, uh, you know, but people are still paying attention and that, that's great. I'm working my best to all that. And um, like I've recently said, I've been approached by some people now, they wanna help me grow this. And, and no, I, I don't think I, I want to do that. Like one, I don't wanna be famous. I know, I'm sitting here talking to people, I don't wanna be famous. Um, I, I could, I mean, my biological father is, is quite known and I could just use his last name and probably get somewhere, but I don't want to. And I've got the people that do follow me, the people that do listen, because even though we're at 80 likes, there's a reach of about 7,000. So that means about there's about 7,000 people that don't necessarily publicly like what I post and put out there, but they do tune in and come back, which is fine. I don't care if you don't want to publicly like anything that I have here or whatever. It's fine. I get it. It's mental health. It's stigma. And sometimes I have opinions that people, you might agree with it, but you just don't want to get into the argument. It's, don't care. Don't worry. If you don't want to publicly like things, you don't. it's fine. It's still great. Again, the analytics are still there and they're still being able to be viewed by people. And again, I don't do this to be famous. I'm just here to try to help people. And... I've been sick and I'm still sick, so I just want to put an update because I post sometimes that I feel so alone and I mean physically I am alone. I don't, nobody comes to visit, nobody really calls, nobody, except for like, you know, the people that are paid to help me go out because I'm so afraid to go out into this world on my own and I probably always will be, but I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got. But then people will answer and I've realized that I'm not... I'm not alone. I mean, even though those people aren't physically here, they still think about me and they still care and they still, you know, would do anything. So I will thank all of you personally later. But I do want to, again, say hi to all the new people and, you know, welcome you here. Again, people, you know, you like my page, you guys can post things as well. If you find something that's relevant, or, you know, you're not too sure if, you know, it's anything or what, post it on there. I mean, have discussions, talk to each other. You, you can do that. That's a thing. And you can post in French if you want. And if you want to post in Arab, go ahead and do that too. Because I know a little bit of it. I've forgotten a lot of it from university. But I still have really close friends that do read and speak Arab. And um, I'm trying to learn it. So, um, yeah, if you want to post anything in there. Do that as well. So, yeah, I want to thank everyone that, you know, was really worried and said that they, it really touched me. I mean, I wasn't okay. I've already talked to before how I was at the hospital like three weeks ago. And yeah, the staff, they are understaffed, understaffed, but doing the best that they can with what they have. And if this little voice can be heard and, and help that situation, then I'm gonna use it for that. Again, I got the chance a few weeks ago to meet with um, a small group of people, which I feel, you know, I still can't believe I was invited, um, to listen to the Federal Minister on Women's Affairs. And one of the things they're talking about, you know, was equality for women, but also equality for everyone. And we'll touch on that later. I'll make a whole video on that later. But the short of it is that this is what our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, wants to try to bring to the world that everybody in this world is as important as everybody else. Because if we didn't have people to wash our bathrooms, then what the heck would happen to them? Don't look down on the person that works at McDonald's because if nobody were to be working at McDonald's, where the heck would you get your burgers at 2 a.m.? 
kind of a thing. You need to have all the blocks of the pyramid for everything to work. And if the bottom part isn't solid, it's all gonna crumble. And the bottom part is the people that don't feel equal and aren't treated that way. And this is where they want to go. Mostly it affects women more than men, but I mean, in all generality, that is where the government wants to go. They want everybody to feel and be just as important. So that's a great thing. We'll get to that another time. That's just, just a hello and think about my health. So let's go about my health update. So I did go to the hospital again. I was there last night. And again, they were short staffed again. And I mean, I feel bad. They feel bad. But this time, I mean, I was prepared. And I know I have crazy, crazy hair. But um, I, I showered and, you know... I need to get the hospital germs off me. <laughs> and then I did all my laundry and um, most of my stuff isn't dry, but it's hang drying because again, I, I have an issue with people taking my clean clothes out of the dryer and then, okay, we all know I have issues, all right? So let's just not go there. But so this is what my hair looks like and we'll just deal. It's just hair. It's really just hair. You can cut it off if it doesn't look, it's just hair. Doesn't matter. You don't need any. If you don't like it, just don't have any. Just, just, just hair. So, again, the health update. So, I went because, I mean, I had pain and I still do. So, last year, I think I've talked about this before, but I will just quickly touch on it again for the new people if they're not aware. Last year in November, um, my friend Kelly. So, Kelly, thank you. All right. We'll address you later, but thank you. Really got tired of me being dismissed at, at one hospital because, I mean, I only have the cab money to get to a certain place. I kept getting dismissed and she brought me to the Dumont and within four hours of the Dumont they realized that my kidneys were failing, my liver was almost in cirrhosis, like I was dying, everything was starting to shut down. Thankfully, you know, I went back and back and back over a period of about a month and a half maybe where they would treat me at the emergency room knowing that I had no family doctor. So, you know, they took care of me, they did all that stuff, I now have a new family doctor and uh, I do see him every once in a while, but he's just really starting to get to know me now. I mean, I have a lot of diagnoses, okay? Not just the mental health reasons. A lot of people think that, you know, my only reason for disability is, is mental health. There's more to that as well. I also have narcolepsy. I have hypoglycemia, which means I have low blood sugar, no matter what I eat. It's now my new diet makes it even worse. Um, all sorts of other things. I do have a heart arrhythmia. We're not too sure where that is. I am getting a halter test, though, I think in a week and a half to, to see where things are. That might be the reason why I sometimes have concussions and have no idea where they came from. Seriously, it's, it's my life. Um, but back to what it was. So, the reason that I've lost a lot of weight over this year, so 100 pounds, actually 105 pounds now. 105 pounds since January. Um, and that was mostly the reason for everything not working well. So I was on lithium and I had been on lithium since I was 17. So pretty much 20 years, I mean 18, something like that, 26. So about 18 years I was on lithium. I had to because at the time it was the only thing that worked. They tried every other kind of concoction and it wouldn't work. And through the years my psychiatrist, because you know, the first one moved away and I got the one that I have now. He's been my psychiatrist for like 15 years or so now, so we know each other very well, and he knows me very well. Um, he realized that I don't have bipolar. I'm not that. I have a personality disorder, and he wasn't quite sure which one it was. Now, a few years ago, he pinpointed it, and uh, we worked on that. That's why I went through the, the DBT skills, passed that, I put them in use, and I'm still going along with that same therapist for another year or two to keep enforcing the skills that I learned in DBT so that they are going to be in the forefront of my thoughts so I can just apply them, you know, just to keep my life better. And I mean, since finishing DBT, which I finished in May, my life has changed so much. My relationships with people are so much better the way I speak about stuff. So DBT is great. It wasn't easy. No kind of therapy is. And again, we'll address therapy another time, how it sounds stupid. But there's a method to that madness. So just shut up and do it. It works, okay? They make you do the dumbest things. I know, you feel like an idiot. But it works. 
It's tried, tested, and true. Because therapy methods have been around since before they invented all the medications. And medicine is a patch. The real answer to mental health stuff is therapy. So, go out and do it. Even though it might sound stupid, you feel dumb, whatever. Just go through it. It's actually going to work. The secret between us, but it works. I don't really know, you know, where the change came, but it did come down to, you know, in January. I finally saw my gastroenterologist, you know, because I've, I've been diagnosed with eosinophilic esophagitis for about three and a half years now. And it took me about till about two weeks ago to be able to say it properly. And still now I struggle. So what eosinophilic esophagitis is in a nutshell is that in my esophagus, I have things called eosinophils, which are white blood cells. That's all they are. They're white blood cells. And I have too many of them. And when I would eat foods that would trigger them, kind of like an allergic reaction, they would multiply and multiply and multiply to the point that my esophagus would just swell shut. Now, when that happens, it's a scary thing because you choke on your own food. And emergency-wise, in an emergency room, they can't do anything about it until you can no longer swallow water. Because emergency scope, you know, when you have to go into your esophagus and, you know, open things up, you can't do that too many times before it starts having the potential for, like, major damage. Which is what my gastroenterologist told me in January. He's like, look, we can't keep going in there. The chances of me perforating... That's what word. I don't know, poking through my esophagus and making a really big mess um, is very high now. So he's like, you're just going to have to do the elimination diet, which again is you just take out everything because we don't know what the triggers are for the white blood cells to multiply. So just take everything out. And technically you're supposed to reintegrate one thing at a time to see if it gives you anything. And I haven't really reintegrated anything. I eat quite well. I mean, I do try to share my recipes with all of you. My kidneys are, you know, at a level where it's safe. They're, they're not perfect. They need to, you know, I still need to see a specialist to see, you know, where the damage is at and if I need to have anything else done. But I'm on the waiting list for that because for those of you who aren't aware, you know, this is Canada or healthcare is free, which means that when you're want to see a specialist, you go on a waiting list and, you know, they're, they're colorblind, money blind. Okay. They're, it's supposed to be that way. Whether it actually ends up working that way or not is not up for debate. We're just going to talk about the real thing. The system works in the sense that people with priority get put in first. The sicker you are, you see the specialist first. So I do have some kidney damage. But at this point, it's not something that's going to affect my health. So I'll eventually get into a specialist. But the people that are like in kidney failure and, and you know, whatnot, they're going to see them first. So I'll wait my turn because until then, my psychiatrist and my new family doctor are monitoring to make sure that it doesn't get worse. So far, it's all right. But through all that, again, when... Last year, when they figured out that everything was falling up, nothing was working right, they went back to the ultrasounds that had been done before from the hospital and nobody ever gave them the results. Yeah, let's get over that. It also turns out that my gallbladder is full of stones. And they told me they weren't going to go in there and, and you know, do an unnecessary operation until it hurt. So it started hurting, and I really thought that that's what it was. I mean, it was all my side and... So I went to the emergency room yesterday around like 4.30. Uh, I had called my gastroenterologist around 4 before that. And she let me know that he is on call, you know, all next week. So just to go see the doctors and maybe they weren't be able to do something, you know, yesterday. But they might put an emergency consult and he would see me during the week. Um, it turns out it wasn't that at all. So once you have one autoimmune disease, you kind of have the potential for the other ones. So I also have really, really bad psoriasis. It's mostly on my head and behind my ears. And I couldn't take any medicine for it because I was on lithium for all those years. And lithium interacts with pretty much everything. All I could take for most of my life was Tylenol. 
That's it. I couldn't take anything else. I couldn't take anti-inflammatories. I couldn't take Advil. I couldn't take, I couldn't take anything. Mostly because it would affect the lithium in my body. So I mean, taking my regular medication, which is my lithium, my regular, you know, dosage, those medications would interact, would make it go higher and lithium is from the poppy. So is heroin. So I could technically overdose. So I couldn't take any of those extra things. So my whole life, I've never been able to take like anything for like a cold and flu, you know, deal with it. So yeah, when I was able to take cold medicine for a cold that I had, um, you know, a while back for the first time in my life, I was like, what's everybody complaining about? This is freaking easy, man. But again, everybody experience is just as important as everybody else's experience by the way just because my experience is like a 10 plus plus and somebody else's experience might be what i would consider a four doesn't mean that that person isn't living that moment at a 10 plus plus so everybody you all matter but getting back to what is actually going on with me i've recently been diagnosed with another autoimmune called Trojan syndrome. It's hard to say because it's S J O with the two little things and R whatever. Um, so that's another autoimmune disease, and it causes pretty much the mucous membranes in your body to you know dry up, which is why I have such a problem with my eyes. My eyes are super super dry. My mouth is always dry, which is why I always tend to swallow a lot because it's really really dry, and, and you know all the other body parts dry up. So much fun. But it also turns out that it's also affecting my digestive tract. Um, it's just, there's not enough mucous membranes for things to work. So when, you know, the inside organs are doing their thing and things are moving along, it's kind of like scraping and not like sliding along. So that's why it hurts. I'm no longer immunocompromised. I think that's the right word. So the medication that I think they come in shots or something where they, you know, help your immune system or whatnot. Those are now something that um, is potentially an option. So I am going to call my family doctor on Monday and, um, you know, see him as soon as I can and get him to, to work on that. So I'm going to be okay. It hurts, but it's nothing that's going to, you know, kill me. It's just going to hurt. I'm going to live with it. I'm not the only person that lives with constant pain. There's people out there that, many people that do. So, yeah. And, so, yeah. That's, that's about all I have to say about, you know, medication. And health-wise, I'm doing very well. I mean, they did a CT scan this morning. All my organs are looking really, really good. They did the blood tests. So, like I said, my liver is now not even considered in danger it's actually coming back to a point where the numbers and the levels of everything is at a place where nobody's worried about anything so i'm getting healthier i'm feeling much much better which is the best part and then the weight loss was just you know an added bonus so our bonus is great they actually really are and with all of this i get a bonus i get friends that I would not have maybe have met it in real life and most of them I haven't met them in real life but but it's up to me and these are things that I learned in my DBT skills like evaluate the relationship with the people like is it really worth it um there's a person that that's you know in my life they weren't for a while they they are now and I don't think that that person realizes how they actually make me feel. So I am going to send them, you know, this whole thing once I'm done with it. Maybe they'll understand. They are super busy. They have a lot of things going. I'm not going to say that that person doesn't love me. I, I know they, they do and they care about me very, very much. But they tend to, you know, choose to do things. And the way they say it is very hurtful about... Well, my family comes first. What am I, chopped liver? That's how I feel, but I can't say that. Um, there's a lot of things going on. Like tonight, it's the, the Christmas parade, and um, I invited them. You know, I live not there very far, but they decided, you know, they're going to go with 
another family member. So they're always choosing other family members. That's what I'm saying. Choosing other family members. I feel like I'm an afterthought. And that's not a really good feeling. And I'm really heavily thinking about, is, is this worth it? Um, but that's what I say. I'm going to send this to that person because they might not realize that that's how I feel. Because we don't have time to talk enough for me to actually say how I feel about how it makes me feel. So I'm just saying it here. And also I'm just going to say it to anybody else out there that's listening. Same thing. If you have someone in your life, they can be close family. I don't talk to my mom unless, you know, I really have to. Because at this point in time, when my mom and I speak to each other, it just hurts. We hurt each other. We're not good for each other. We're toxic. We have to walk away. Not because my mom doesn't love me, not because I don't love her. Um, it's just, it just doesn't work between us right now because we both have things to work and it's just not working. So we're, we're walking away. Will we ever speak again? I don't know. I don't think it's fixable. However, people surprise me every day, so you never know. And it just goes for anybody out there. If you have someone in your life, you know, it can be your mom. It can be your sister. It can be, you know, your best friend. If you talking to them, spending time with them leaves you feeling worthless or leaves you feeling like they don't respect or love you, walk away. Walk away. You cannot make anybody like you. You can't make anybody respect you. Even though sometimes they should. But you still can't make them. And if it hurts you on the inside and you voice to them that, and then they just don't get it, think of yourself and just walk away. I have to do that sometimes. I mean, I help a lot of people here with no holds barred. And sometimes I give people help, you know, this is what you need to do. And they don't do it. And then, you know, they keep asking for help and I'll give them a little bit more. You get two chances with me here on no holds barred, okay? Two chances. If I give you, you know, help on a silver platter the first time and you don't take it, Sometimes, you know, life is tough. All right, that's great. I give you a second one and you still don't take it and then you're still complaining that I'm walking away. I also have to look out for myself. I can't give all of me. I do give a lot more than I get back, but that's okay. I think that's kind of what my purpose in life is and we're not going to complain about that. But you have to want to help yourself. There is no key to success. There is no key to fixing mental illness or mental health issues, or just life in general. We're in this weird kind of generation where, I don't know, things just went sideways. Our parents tried to raise, or not mine, but I don't know. Parents tried to raise their kids to not be hurt because they see them get bullied and they were bullied and they were missing out on stuff and they just didn't want their child to feel that way. But it ends up creating another whole generation of kids who are technically adults but can't take care of themselves. They can't do anything like this. So this is it's a sad post, but I think it's important. It is live PD, so, you know. She's 18. This is what happens when parents do everything for their kids. They turn into adults because she's 18, so she's going to be 19 soon. She's going to be an adult. And they can't handle or cope with anything. She's upset and crying because she doesn't know what to do because her boyfriend just got arrested for drugs. She doesn't know what to call. She doesn't know what to do. They told her you get in your car, you go home, and you deal with it from there. She's so hysterical because she's got nothing. She doesn't know how to handle anything. And I mean, they're obviously a little bit, you know, but, and okay, I'm going to stop it here because she says, you know, she doesn't know how to handle this situation. And I mean, I, everybody would freak out. Everybody would be upset, but to the point of begging the cops to arrest you too, because you don't know how to deal with the fact that your boyfriend just got arrested for having heroin. He's trying his best to calm her down. Yeah. 
I just want to fuck my boyfriend. These, this is our next generation. Yeah, that that that's scary to me. That not okay and not know what to do in life. I mean, I would. I mean, I would react horribly if I was in that situation. I mean, I'd probably be crying or something. But I wouldn't be standing there like, can you please arrest me too? Because I don't know what to do with my life. And, you know, this is the little, you know, autistic, mentally ill person who figured this out. So I feel bad for that girl. But, I mean, she's not the only person that acts like that. And are we going to fix it? No, I'm just saying that it happens. So if anything happens that, you know, you get first responders to, you know, an accident or crime scene or you know whatever they might have just been dealing with someone like that and that's it's frustrating so again <clears throat> the system is just overworked that everything they don't have enough resources here in this part of our little world we gotta work with what we got and working with what you got work with the friends that you have so when it comes to thanking my friends like megan i love you girl you're my girl you know it and for those of you who don't know who Megan is, you don't need to. It's fine. She's my friend. And Megan's actually going through the exact same things that I'm going through. So I know she's not going to come to my house and see me because I can't go to her house and see her. Um, but the difference is, is that I'm about three years into the journey and she's just kind of starting it now. And I mean, I'm going to be there as much for her. I try to help her. She wants to be there for me, but I mean... I totally get it that leaving her house to come see me isn't something she, you know, that's comfortable for her to do. I get it. I don't blame you for anything. And I know that you care about me because when anything happens, I can text you at any time and you will always answer back. And that means everything. You don't necessarily have to physically be here because you're answering. And this is me just realizing now that when I feel lonely and alone, I'm thinking about the physical, but I, I'm not. I'm spiritually with, with people and I need to learn to deal and live with that because I am not alone. I am not unloved and unworthy of anything. I do have friends. Like I said, Megan, she's listened to so much of my things and, and just been there just by support or just by listening. And, and the same thing goes for my friend Kelly, like I said earlier. Um, my friend Kelly, we met through one of my posts, you know, before I made No Holds Barred about disability. She's going through her own disability where she still does stuff every single day. She has a husband and, and kids, which from what I understand when you're married, that makes you have an extra kid. But no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've never met her husband, but I've heard great things about him. I've met her kids and everything like that. And, um, it, it's actually nice to see these days that there are still relationships that are founded on on the good things you know when times get tough they don't just walk away you know they deal with it um i've never met him but i'm sure he's an amazing amazing person so you know happy for both of you and again she doesn't always have time to to come and talk to me but when she can she, she does which is great and it's always heartfelt and it's always you know from a very good place and there's many other people out there that i could call out and say thank you for but there's a lot of you that don't publicly say it. So that's why I'm not going to call it anybody else. I'm just calling these two because they're personally my friends. And I know they're okay if I publicly thank them for things. I am loved. I, I, I just didn't realize it. And it goes along with, you know, the fact that I do have borderline personality disorder. And that does come from, you know, things that happened in my... I mean, I was bullied hardcore in school. There's, you know, I have an absent father, you know. I don't talk about my biological father, but people really know his name. They know who he is. And when I tend to kind of mention or they hear my last name, they're like, hey, are you his kid? And I'm like, yeah. And then they ask me what he's up to. I'm like, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in like 18 years. It's kind of awkward. And it's his choice to not want to be in my life because no kid of his is going to be gay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not missing out on the father experience. I have a stepdad who I call my dad my mom's second husband and he's he's my dad he's been there since i was seven he listened to me cry you know he'd scare all the boys when they would come pick me up even though underneath it all he knew i was gay because he's the first person i came out to 
And in a weird way, my dad's homophobic but doesn't want to be. So he's uncomfortable around, you know, gay men and whatnot, but he doesn't say anything. But when it comes to me, he was like, I knew that. It's cool. So if you're the type of person that has someone like that in your life, whether it be mental health wise or your sexuality wise, they just, they don't understand the whole thing. Cause trust me, the, the whole thing of like sexuality and gender and all that kind of whatnot. Cause if you want to put labels on it, I am gender non-binary pansexual. Just go with queer. I'm just me. Let's just go with me. I'm just me. This is who I am. My dad doesn't understand any of that stuff. Doesn't understand the stuff about mental health either. He can't even tell you the names of my diagnosis. He don't know. However, he knows me. He knows what are my triggers. He knows what bothers me. He knows how to protect me from those things. So he doesn't need to read a book. And there's people out there, same thing. If you have a friend, family member, a parent, they don't necessarily have to know all the words, but if they accept you the way that you are, then just be happy. So just, just go with that. And you know, just, just go with that. Um, it's sometimes it's a big thing for them to accept. So if they just get you as you are, but they're getting some nouns, pronouns off, or they're referring to the, just take it in stride a little bit because they'll eventually get there. If they at least accept you as you are, then, then you've won 95% of the battle. And speaking of accepting as you are and 95% of the battle, I'm thanking all of you for accepting me as I am because I don't hold back. I'm very direct. I'm a very honest person. I don't fancy pants anything. I tend to say it as it is. I had to learn how to say it as it is in a better fashion than I used to, which skills from DVT seriously help. And music, music is my thing. So there is a thing called being a meloman, which is the French word or a melomaniac, which means you're addicted to music. And I happen to be one of those persons. Um, I have a trumpet here. <laughs> My friend Ted got me this at a yard sale. I can't play it. I just don't because I'm in an apartment and I'm scared. people make too much noise. I do have a guitar. It's, it's over there somewhere, but I have nails, so I don't play it. And I did take about five years of theory and, and tenor saxophones. I can play that too. They're just too expensive and loud and I don't own one. But when you're a melomaniac, you actually think and see everything musically. So for me, music is my escape. Now for me, my big music is usually like prog metal. So progressive metal. So yes, that includes Avenged Unfold. They're my all-time, all-time favorite. I did cry when I learned that the Rev passed away. I still feel it to this day. So to me, music totally speaks to me. So that's mostly what I listen to. And um, my ex, who never got anything right about me, did say this, though, that I was too much of a good girl to listen to this bad music. And it's not necessarily the lyrics. I listen to the harmonies and the symphonies and the whole everything together. And right now, I'm like huge into Post Malone. Now, I know he might look odd, but if you listen to them musically, I think he's a musical genius. And he's only like 23 or some shit like that. I don't know. There's layers in that music that are really appealing to me. And if you actually listen to his lyrics, like what the hell did this kid go through in his life to be able to have that kind of like insight in life? Like, I don't know. But I'm, I'm really blast in that one but the last time that I found an artist that really made me think about the person and changed my life was when I discovered Event Sevenfold about 11 12 years ago so this is a huge thing for me I'm really wrapped up in all of that loving all of it and just giving that insight to all of you that whatever kind of music it is that speaks to you because that's the beauty of music the beat and the tempo actually do affect you. It actually has to do with the rhythm of your heart. It's how it goes. But then the melodies and the symphonies together with the message and the words of the song all affect your brain because it uses all your senses. Whatever it is, if the music speaks to you, then listen to it. I listen to a lot of Christian bands as well. Now, we're not going to get into the whole thing of religion, but for the longest time, 
my mom didn't realize I was listening to corn in my bedroom because she thought I was still listening to, you know, my Christian rock bands. And uh, by the time she figured it out, it was like way too late, but not the point. Um, so just because it's, you know, labeled whatever, if you like it, listen to it. If it has bad words in it, listen to it anyway. If, if you like it, then, then go for it. Just have to realize and learn, like I'm learning, that some of those words cannot be said in public. And I'm learning that. So if I say bad words in public and you ever see me, you can call me out on it because I'm trying to be a better person and not say bad words. Because a four-letter word that starts with F is like my favorite word. And sometimes it's not appropriate, but sometimes it is. So I just babbled on for like way too long. So thank you for everyone.